I think I have seen like 50 requests for this particular question. Everyone seems to have trouble with it, and I get it. There's lots of ways to think about it, too. There's a very mathematical, formulaic, your math teacher will be proud kind of way to think about it. But obviously, if you were doing the test and you were confused with this question, and you didn't remember the fact that you were supposed to remember, then what, what, you, what are you going to do? You're just going to give up on the question? No. We have an easy strategy that we can use. You can't get this wrong, or at least you should be able to increase your odds. Because we have an equation, right? And we know from my strategies that one of our best, most powerful strategies is to plug points into equations. So if you have an equation and you're confused, your job is to think, can I get some points to plug in there? Can I get something? And so they're asking about a point anyway. So there's another clue. They're rephrasing it into A and B instead of X and Y, but it's behaving the same way, right? We know that A is an X value, B is the resulting Y value. So what we would like to do is plug in some A's, some X's, and see what we get. And we have a little bit of a rule, right? A has to be between negative 1 and 1. So this is perfect, because if we like to arithmetize, if we like to plug points in, we know that our favorite numbers anyway are zeros and ones and so we've got that within this range so why not just start off with the most simple thing what would happen if a or x were equal to zero well then y would be zero minus one times zero plus one times zero plus two right so y would be negative one times positive one times positive two which is negative two okay well, they want something that's not a possible value of B. Well, we just proved A is wrong, right? We, we just found that possible value. So that's pretty good. Okay, what's next? Well, let's try another number. Let's try 1. That's the next simple thing. So A is 1. So Y is equal to 1 minus 1 times 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 2. And here we start to overlap with the more mathematical formulaic approach to this question, right? What happens right here? 1 minus 1 is 0. So 1 is a 0 of this function, right? So y is equal to 0. And so that gets rid of a choice for us. That gets rid of c. But it also starts to kind of help us understand what's happening is we've got some places where this function is kind of hitting that x-axis. That's what those function factor pieces at the top mean. So we'll talk about that in a second. Now, we could... From here, the next logical thing is to try negative 1, just because why not? Now, if we do that, though, we're not really going to learn anything new because negative 1 is also a 0. And so because of this term now, everything is equal to 0, and we would kind of not really get any new information. So we would get 0. And there's lots of places we can go from here. But now we might even just be able to think logically, right? Like, we've got two options left. It's got to be one of these two. So either it's impossible for b to be negative 1 or for b to be 1, right? So y, the y is either going to be negative 2 or 0. Or, or uh, sorry, we know that y could be negative 2 or 0. So we're now saying, well, how would that impact these other values, negative 1 or 1? Well, the logical thing is that if y can be 0 or negative 2, it's got to pass negative 1 along the way. And so the smart guess at this point is D. And that's the answer. And, and I don't know that that last step that I did, sorting between B and D, is as obvious as getting rid of A and C. A and C, you got to do. If, even if you're confused, you got to plug in 0, you got to plug in 1, you got to see that those numbers are, are bad answers, right? That mandatory. Now you've doubled your odds of getting it right, and hopefully we can kind of reason it out from there. We could keep trying some numbers. It would be very difficult to do this. We could plug in negative 1 and 1 for, for y and, and guess and check. It would be very hard to do that, but we could try it. Um, the reason, though, is maybe we could have been graphing as we were doing this. So let's try to look at the graph here. I hate graphing on the SAT. We usually don't have to do it, but let's try. So we've got... A little graph, I'm going to try to put on the points that we already did. Let me use the same color. So we learned that when x is 0, y is negative 2. So that's right here. So 0, negative 2. Right? We plug that in, and that's what showed up. So we're just plotting, plotting the point we have. And then we also learned, the green, that when x is 1, y is 0. So that's right here. 
So we've got one, zero. So there's a lot of other stuff that's going on. We also kind of found out through the blue that when x is negative one, we also have y is equal to zero. So we can put that on there too. And the, there's lots of ways to connect these dots, but we can kind of see what we're really being asked is, does y hit this point, negative one, or does it hit this point, positive one? Well, try to connect those dots. You don't even have to connect them in a mathematical way, right? Like, we can kind of see that, like, it's probably going to do something like this. And so look, it's, it's passing by negative one. So there you go. I don't know what this point is. I don't know where it hits negative one exactly. I don't really care. But I can now see, well, in order to go from zero to negative two, you kind of have to pass by negative one. There's really no way to do it otherwise. This isn't some weird stepwise function that's like jumping and breaking all over the place, right? It's a curve. Um, so there we go. Uh, the, the real reason, I guess, if we wanted to get a little bit more technical is we also have a zero. So we have a zero at one, at negative one, and at negative two. So we also have a zero all the way out here. And so what's happening is we're kind of creating a, a normal cubic curve. And basically it's gonna look like that if we extended it forever. But they're specifically asking what happens between negative one and positive one. So yeah, it does eventually get to one as a value for y, for b. Uh, it's going to happen because of the way that a cubic would work, right? There's three x's here. x to the third is really what we're dealing with. So a, a cubic looks like this. Um, because there's nothing wacky about it, it's, it's going to follow this normal format where it kind of starts in the negatives and then does a little loopy thing and then goes positive. So it, it follows a normal pattern. It's just that we're being restricted basically to this area. And so even though it does go to one in other places, our, our logic was right before. Is it, it in the place that we're told to look, it kind of has to go down only. And so it's going to pass the negative one as part of that curve, but it's never going to go up above it. So that's hard. I, I, in fact, if you don't even get that, that's fine. The main thing you need to take away from this question is that if you have an equation and you are confused, you need to be thinking, can I find a point? Is there something I can plug into this equation? The answer is almost always yes. And here they told us, they switched it up by making A and B out of X and Y, but they told us numbers to pick and you should have plugged them in without even knowing why it was good. You should just do it robotically and see what happens. And sure enough, two of the answers go away and you've doubled your odds of getting it right without doing anything other than just this robotic move. You don't understand even what you're doing, but it's okay. You're just trying to get the points any way you can, and this is a way to get the ball rolling. And I think a lot of times on the SAT, if you get the ball rolling, if you start step one, step two, you'll surprise yourself, and you'll find step three and step four and step five along the way. And so that's okay. Don't be afraid to start if you don't know where you're going to finish. We're, we'll figure it out. You're smart enough to do that, so just have a plan to get the ball rolling and you'll get to more ending steps just by having started something.